Hello, this is Stokes Baker. Today I'd like to talk about how to use Microsoft Excel to perform linear regression analysis. What I'm showing here is the output Excel will create if you use the data analysis tool pack. Assuming the tool pack is activated, then the path to do this would be click the data tab, click the data analysis tab, and then you would choose the regression option. After filling out the various data log box, you will get an output that looks similar like this. There's a lot of statistical values that are produced in this report. First thing I'm going to talk about is what's labeled multiple R. What that is is Pearson's correlation coefficient. And that is a measure of how good a straight line explains the observed variation. The value of correlation coefficients range from minus 1 to positive 1. If it's minus one or positive ones, all the data points will go through a straight line. If the value is zero, there is no linear relationship. And if it's something in between, then there's some linear relationship, but there will be scattered around the straight line. The next thing we'd like to talk about is R squared. That is known as the coefficient of determination. That is the proportion of Y variation that is explained by the straight line. So what you do is you take uh, Pearson's correlation coefficient and you square it. So in this example, the coefficient of determination is 0.489, so 48.9% of the Y variation is explained by a straight line. I'm going to not talk about de novo analysis, but I am going to talk about these various hypothesis tests that are written down here, these various T-tests. The first thing I want to point out where is this intercept, that is the value of the Y-intercept. Here, there's going to be multiple different labels. This is whatever you actually have on your x-axis is your label. This turns out to be the slope of the regression line. It will also calculate the corresponding standard errors and a corresponding t-statistic. From that t-statistic, it will then do one sample t-test to calculate different p-values. P is the probability that the observed variation is due to chance sampling variation. This first t-test with the corresponding p-value, the null hypothesis for that t-test is that the y-intercept equals zero. So in this case, if we set alpha at 0.05 or 5 percent, p at 0.7 is 0.77 is larger than 0.05. So we would be accepting the null hypothesis that the y-intercept goes through zero. The next hypothesis test, this t statistic corresponding value p, has a null hypothesis that r equals zero. In this case, if you set alpha at 5% or 0.05, p is less than alpha, in which case you would be rejecting the null hypothesis, in which case you would then say that the regression line is statistically significant. Additionally, Excel will calculate confidence intervals for both the y-intercept, which is t, these two values right here, and the slope of the regression line. What I'd like to do here is to show you the steps involved in actually using Excel to do regression analysis. There's more than one way of doing this. I'm going to be using the data analysis tool pack. Now, in this particular example, this data generated by some of my students in which they were using a spectrophotometer to measure the concentration of phosphate in water and local pots there at university. So to do this experiment, they first needed to set up a standard curve. This values right here are the uh, phosphate standards they were used, and the units of measure is micrograms of phosphorus per liter of water. We're going to call that the x-axis. And for the y-axis, we're going to optical density measured at 718 nanometers. So how do we get the regression line and the corresponding analysis? Again, we're going to use the data analysis tool pack. Assuming the data analysis tool pack is activated, to do the regression analysis, we're going to click the tab data, data analysis. Here's our data analysis tool packs dialog box. Uh, and we are going to choose regression and then we're going to click OK. You can see here's the dialog box. 
first thing I ask you where is your Y data click this box highlight the Y data make sure you include the labels click that for the X values click the box highlight the X values make sure you include the label then we're going to click the label box since we included the label we're going to tell Excel where we want to print out in this case I'll put it in cell D1 and then finally click this button that says line fit plot click that and you're going to press OK here is our statistical data and here is the corresponding straight line equation. Let's get rid of the chaff. We don't want these red boxes, so click any red box, hit the delete button, and what we have now is the data points on our XY data plot. To add your best fit line, click any data point. Right click it if you're a PC person, two finger click if you're a Mac person, and then you're going to say add trend line. And as you can see, we get several different options, so types of regression. Default is linear regression. You can see here's our trend line. And then you might want to say display chart equation, display R squared. And then here's our graph with our best fit line and the corresponding regression line. First question is that is the regression line statistically significant? So to look to determine that, we're going to look at these two values. And for that, our null hypothesis is going to be R equals zero. P is definitely smaller than alpha and therefore we're going to reject the null hypothesis in which case we are saying the regression line is statistically significant since this is a standard curve we, we do want our regression line to go through zero so to do that we're going to look at these two values and for this example, the null hypothesis is going to be the y-intercept equals zero. Since, in this case, p is larger than alpha of 5%, for example, we're going to accept the null hypothesis, which is exactly what we want. Now, what if I want to then use this regression line to measure the concentration of phosphorus? Let's say we had an unknown, and we've got a optical density of 118 nanometers reading, of uh, 0.22 zero so this is the measurement that's the corresponding optical density okay what is the mass per microliter per I'm sorry per liter of phosphorus Okay, so again, here's our y equals mx plus b equation. In this case, we are given y. We need to solve for the corresponding value of x. So if we had a optical absorbance reading of 0.22, what is the concentration of phosphorus? Well, again, our regression line gave us the value of y equals mx plus b. The absorbance is our value of y, so we need to solve for x. 
this is the same equation, but instead of being equal to x, we're now e arrange it to solve for x instead of y. m is your slope, so this is our value of m right here. This is our y-intercept. We have the slope, we have the intercept. That's our value of y right here. To get our concentration, we're going to say equals the value of y, which is right here, minus the y-intercept, which is right here. We're going to divide that by the slope, which is right here. And that is our concentration. And I'm showing you right here the equation I used and the corresponding value. So since our water sample produced an optical density of 0.22, that means the water sample had a phosphorus concentration of 37.2 micrograms of phosphate per liter. I hope this was helpful. Have a good day.